What's going on guys, it is Caleb, and today we are going to continue our Introduction to Objects 1, um, learning a little bit more in uh, object-oriented programming, or other known as JavaScript. So today we're going to be covering what is an object. So let's start by learning how to create objects and use information inside them. Without further more ado, let's go ahead and head over to Code Academy, and let's get started. So, once again, I'm just going to reset my code. In an introduction, we have discussed two data types previously, numbers and strings. In this lesson, we focus on a third data type, objects. The data type is a little bit more complex. Objects allow us to represent and code real-world things and entities, such as a person's or bank account. We do this by storing all relevant information in one place, an object. How do we create an object? Like declaring a variable or defining a function, we use the word var, followed by the name of the object and the equal signs. Each object then starts with an open curly brace, has information inside it, and ends with a curly brace and a semicolon. Create an object called bob that has no information inside the brackets. <laughs> so to create our first little object here, all we have to do is var bob equals open and close bracket and go ahead and click submit for this one and we'll get the green light and once again let's just reset our code so properties each piece of information we include in an object is known as a property think of properties like a category label that belongs to something when creating an object each property has a name followed by a colon and then the value of that property. For example, if we want Bob's objects to show he is 34, we type in age colon 34. The age is, a, is the property and 34 is the value of this property. When we have more than one property, they are separated by commas. The last property does not end with a comma. And that's a very important thing to remember. Don't add a comma to the very end or else you're going to you're going to get an error with that but if you don't add commas between your different keys and your values and your properties which are your properties um you're going to get an error there because it's going to it's not going to be able to reference it it's going to be like okay well if you have age and you have country when am i supposed to sign it 22 or am i supposed to sign it united states the little comma there says hey age is 22 and then comma now we're saying okay well now we have another key or property which is called country and we're going to assign that to the United States which is a string so the instructions are see the console for an object one I have created about myself can or see the console for the object I have created about myself can you create an object called me that describes your age and which country you live in so to do this all we have to do is just say var capital M for me and then equals open curly braces hit enter and as you can see we're automatically indented so now we can just go ahead and say age and type in our age and um, make sure to put a, a comma and not a semicolon after that now after we have our age now we can say country and we can assign it to a string and we just say USA. And make sure that I put a semicolon after your um, end brace down here because if you don't, it won't be able to read it as an object. So let's go ahead and save and submit. And we get the green light. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and just reset this. Accessing properties. Now that we know how to make objects with properties, Let's look how we can actually use them. Notice our example objects Bob and Susan. In this case, both Bob and Susan each have two properties, name and age. After creating our object, we have added code to access these properties. Notice that we save Bob's name, Bob Smith, into the global variable name1. We do this on line 10. Now, uh, see, it's not going to highlight, but if we go ahead and look right here, this is a global variable because it's outside of our um, 
our objects. Not only that, but it's it's declaring Bob dot name, which is referencing Bob uh, the object Bob, and then the dot name is referencing this key down here, which is the name, and it's signing it its property of Bob Smith. So. What it wants us to do is finish the exercise by filling in the code in lines 13 and 14 to access the name and age for Susan and save those into given global variables. So right here where it says var name2, we're going to say susan.name. Now what this is going to do, it's going to first look at this whatever Susan is. Is going to run through all the code and it's going to say, okay, well, Susan is an object. Okay, so now we're looking at this. Well, what kind of properties does this object have? We have a dot name property, we have a dot age property, and both of those have two different values. Well, we're, de we're um, declaring the dot name property or we're referencing it and we're saying, okay, well, set name to, to Susan dot name, which is Susan Jordan. Now, for the age two, we just say the same exact thing, but instead of using dot name, you guessed it, we're going to use dot age. Now, if we go ahead and save and submit our code, we'll probably get the green light. Hopefully, indeed, we do. So, all works well. Let's go on to the next lesson. Now, let's go ahead and just reset our code. <clears throat> Access accessing properties part two. In the last exercise, we access properties using what is known as dot notation. Good name, right? So, access a, to access a property, we use object dot name or object name dot property name. Example: Bob dot name. In addition to dot notation, we can also access properties using bracket notation. In this case, we use object name, open bracket. And then our property name is within quotes, and that's very important to access the desired property. Note that we need quotation marks around the property's name. Take a look at our next example object called dog. Notice on line 8 how we save the dog species into a variable by accessing the species property of dog using bracket notation. So we go ahead and look over here before we read our instructions. We, say, we are looking at this new bracket notation before we're using dot notation. And you know, it's pretty self-explanatory there. You're either using a dot or a bracket. And um, a lot of people uh, use the dot notation, but bracket notation, you'll see later on, comes in handy whenever you are um, specifying or indexing um, objects or anything in that nature. So uh, we'll get in further detail about that later on throughout this course. But... The global variable species right here is set the dog species. And this is the same thing as saying, okay, well, go look at the dog object, which is right here. Now search for the species property, which is right here, the very first property. And whatever it is set to, which is right now it's greyhound, the variable species is now going to be set to greyhound. So use bracket notation to save the dog's weight and age into the variables as well. So to save the weight, all we have to say is dog, open bracket, and then we throw in the weight, or we type weight. And this will reference the dog and then the weight property, and then we'll get a result of 60. Now for the age, we just say dog once again, and we change it to age and make sure to have these things inside of quotation marks. Now it's going to give you these little yellow um, triangles and it's going to say well it's better to written dot notation but we can just ignore that for right now. Let's go ahead and save and submit our code and see what we get as a result. So we get the green light so it's all is good. Let's move on to the next thing. So let's go ahead and reset this. Another way to create the method we've used to create objects uses object literal notation. That is, creating a new object with curly braces and defining properties within the brackets. Another way of creating objects without using the curly brackets is use the keyword new. This is known as creating an, an object using a constructor. The new keyword creates an empty object when followed by object. 
The general syntax is var object name equals new object. We then have to fill in this object with properties and labels. How do we do that? Check out the creation of object Bob to see, uh, to see what we do. We create the name property for the object Bob by using Bob.name and assigning that to a value. Contrast this to how we define properties in lines 6 through 7 for the Susan 1 object. So the instructions are to inspect the Susan 1 object carefully and note the use of object literal notation. Use constructor notation to create Susan 2, which should have the same properties and values as Susan 1. So if we were to go ahead and look at Susan 1 right now, we're using object literal notation. Or let's not even look at that first. Let's go ahead and look at our Bob object and see how they create the new object with using the um, literal, not literal notation, but we're using it as a constructor. We're creating it with a constructor instead of using literal notation. And once again, creating it with a constructor is saying var, then our object's name, equals new object. And it's important to keep the O capitalized, followed by two um, parentheses. That's very important when creating an object. Now, we can see we don't have to assign any key values or properties in there. We just say, we, we use dot notation, in other words, bob.name equals, and we're assigning it, we're just creating new keys for it. And we're assigning it to whatever the name is, and then bob.age, once again, that is using um, dot notation, and we are assigning it to 30. And, you know, it looks good all in that way. But using literal notation is a little bit better. You know, you can grasp it a lot easier. It makes more sense, at least from a, um, a viewing perspective, I would say. But here we have Susan1 equals, and note this is literal notation because we have the open curly braces instead of saying new object. Now, it's very important to um, know your key terms when it comes down to objects as this... Uh, a lot of new syntax is what we're going to be learning here and um, later on in the courses you're going to be like whoa I don't remember this so you're going to have to come back to these videos and review which is all good so before we get too carried away here we want to make a new Susan2 object using a constructor instead so to do that we just say var Susan2 equals new object now it's going to give us this little thing, and it's going to say you should use object literal notation, but we're just going to ignore that. So if we go ahead and click enter now. What we're going to say is susan name equals, and I'm going to copy the Susan Jordan uh, line up here, and I'm just going to paste it. And now what we do is add a little semicolon. Now we say susan2 dot age equals and now I'm gonna state that she is 24 and add our semicolon now if we go ahead and save and submit our code we get the green light and we're on our way because we are just lovely programmers and we are just awesome and y'all do everything I say and we are just riding along so putting it all together now that we've learned how to make objects in two different ways and use their properties, let's practice it all together. So the instructions are, use literal notation to finish the Snoopy object. Remember, literal notation is the one where we fill in the curly braces with separate properties and values with colons. Each property is separated by a comma. Snoopy should have two properties, a species of beagles and an age of 10. Then make Buddy a five-year-old golden retriever using constructor notation. The notation involves using the keyword new to create an empty object. Then we will fill it in using dot notation. So um, if we go ahead and reset our code, and everything just went away, unfortunately. So help us make Snoopy using little notation. So the, make him using little notation. We're just going to add the little curly braces. Now what we're going to say 
we're going to give him a species and we're going to put our little colon and he's going to be a beagle now we're going to put a little comma now we're going to give him an age and he should be 10 years old now if we go down here to buddy buddy is going to equal a new object and we want to make sure to put a semicolon after Snoopy so now that we have um, our new buddy object now we're going to say buddy dot species and then we're going to assign it a new species and buddy should um, I guess he's going to be the same species as a beagle so I guess that would work so I'm going to copy beagle So. Or actually, Buddy was a golden retriever, wasn't he? So, um, actually, I said that wrong. Let's uh, copy this. So, Buddy that species equals golden retriever. Now we say Buddy dot age equals five because Buddy should be five years old. All right. So that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and save and submit our code and see what we get. And we get the green light, so it's all good. Sweet. Okay, so now, more practice making objects. And I'm going to go ahead and reset my code. Nice job. Let's do, more, let's do one more example to get the hang of making objects with desired properties. Create an object called BMW, which should have three properties. A cost of too much, a speed of 220, and a country of Germany. Okay, so we can make this using any... Um, any of the two ways that were previously defined. We can use the literal notation or we can use the constructor. So I'm going to show you both the ways. And to do this, all we're going to say is var bmw, bmw equals curly braces. And this is using literal notation. Now we're going to have a cost. And that's going to be of too much. Remember, these are followed by um, commas, not semicolons. Now we're going to have a speed of 220 and a country, a uh, country, there we go, a country of Germany. All right. And now we're going to add our semicolon at the end of our object. So that was using literal notation. Now to use um, the constructor, we're just going to say var and uh, once again bmw equals new object now what we're going to say is bmw uh, I don't know why I don't ever hit the b bmw dot cost equals too much and now bmw dot speed equals 220 now BMW dot country equals Germany and those should be followed by semicolons because it is a statement so this is how you make both the BMWs you should only make one of them but this is using both the literal notation and the uh, using the constructor to create a new empty object Alright guys, if this video helped you guys out, make sure to um, like the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more in future videos. Leave a comment if you guys ever get stuck or have any questions. Until next time guys, it's been Caleb and don't forget to submit and save your code. And congratulations, we finished this project. Alright guys, until next time, peace.